whatever happened, the intention was the worst it could possibly be. This is why I think context matters. I, I mean, I really do. Let's go to Lamont in Cincinnati. What's up, Lamont? Hey, how you doing? Living the dream, Lamont. That's good. Um, I was just calling them and kind of piggyback off what uh, the guy the first called the chat. Um, the way it is, though, most of the time when a white person compares a black person to a monkey or a gorilla, it's not a compliment. That's just the way it is. Now, if you saw Black Panther, you saw there were um, different tribes in Wakanda. One of the tribes took on the moniker of a gorilla. That was a sign of strength. It wasn't a demeaning thing or anything like that. And another thing I want to touch on was... But, but okay, that's, so again, said, that's context, right? Like, okay, but, now, now, but why I'm do you, why do you assume... Well, why would you assume immediately that the white person who is doing that, like if Steve Harvey, you you heard the audio that we played of Steve Harvey. Um, if yeah. I played that exact same audio and it was, I mean, who's, who's a white guy that's on, uh, let's say that Michelle Beadle said it, all right? Michelle Beadle said it, she's a white woman. Would you immediately assume that she was racist? I wouldn't, but I know that one show, somebody would bring it up and make it where it came out as racist. But like I said, a lot of the time, most of the time, when a white person compares a black person to a monkey or a gorilla, it's not a compliment. What about my example where I said, said, but but again, this is talking about context. If I said Cam Newton Mm -hmm. is, uh, you're watching an NFL game, and they made the mistake of letting me call an NFL game. And I said, man, and I probably wouldn't say it, uh, in fact, I'm pretty certain that I wouldn't because I'd be like, oh, I don't want to even like put myself in this position. But if I said, right. man, Cam Newton just dominated all these other dudes, he looks like King Kong out there on the football field. And immediately, yes. like, would you think that was racist? But you would be fine with me saying, man, Cam Newton just dominated all those people. He looks like Godzilla out there on the football field. In both situations, I'm choosing like a superhuman, like un uh, un deniably dominant physical beast to represent an athlete who is dominating, right? And if I said Tim Tebow looked like King Kong out there, nobody would even blink, right? So the context is right, because, I'm using it the same way. Right, because nobody, I've never heard a white person talk about another white person as a gorilla in a bad way. That's automatically assumed to be... All right, what about uh, my next uh, question? I think this is an interesting question, Lamont. What obligation... Do there are tons of kids I bet listening to our show right now driving into school. Many of them are living in a society where they will have never heard a negative racial connotation of a black person associated with a with a monkey, with an ape, with any kind of animal like that. What obligation do? Oh, I think that there are a massive. I I in my life, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. I went to a school named after Martin Luther King. In my entire life. I have never heard anybody refer to a black person as a ape or gorilla. I've heard black people refer to other black people as apes or gorillas, uh, but I've never heard a white person do it in my entire life. Not with in front of a black person, not private conversation. Uh, in my life, maybe I'm just in a strange place, uh, in an aberrant place. I have very rarely to never in my life ever heard somebody make a racist comment in my circle ever. It's in law school, well, that's in college, that's in... Uh, the school that I went to from kindergarten through 12th grade in Nashville, and I grew up in the South. Now, maybe that's maybe that's an aberrant result. Maybe a lot of other people out there who are 39 years old are listening to me, and they're like, oh, I've heard a lot of racist comments over the years, but I just never have. So to what extent do you have an obligation to teach younger generations old racism, which arguably makes them more aware of racism and could make them more racist? I think it's a fascinating question. I believe that. There, you might not have heard it before, but in the, in the state, in the time of, uh, where we are in this country, where, where social media is so prevalent, I'm sure it's all over the place. A lot of people, a lot of kids have heard it. But I wanted to touch on, on the context thing. Now, if you say you have to watch the context, if, a, if somebody calls call somebody a gorilla, why can't that same idea be put to the NFL players who protest the flag 
why can't, just like you said, why do we have to assume the worst? Why can't we listen and see what's the context of this protest? Well, I think what's, the problem, the it's a good point. I got to go to it. I got to go an update. I think the problem on the protest is one, it wouldn't matter what somebody was protesting if they take a knee during the national anthem and Colin Kaepernick comes out and says, I refuse to stand for a flag that. Because you're immediately saying that you're refusing to stand for the flag. Specifically, as a part of your protest, you are basically turning your back on the flag. So it doesn't matter for a lot of people what the finish to that sentence is. You could say, I refuse to stand for the flag for uh, because gay marriage is illegal. Or I refuse to stand for the flag because this country allows abortion to take place. Once you begin your argument with I refuse to stand for the flag because, for many people, that's a non-starter. The because doesn't matter. It's the same thing with, for many people, burning the flag. You have a constitutional right to burn the flag. If I were deciding to protest and I said, you know what, I'm going to burn the flag because I'm mad that Donald Trump got elected president. For many people... When you say, I'm going to burn the flag, they don't even get to the because. Because they are focused on the lack of respect the beginning of your protest is having, and they don't even get to the second part. And that's, for Colin Kaepernick, why I've been saying for so long that his protest was ineffective and not very intelligent because it intentionally, for many people, turned them off the minute he protested the flag. If Colin Kaepernick had started trying to raise money for awareness and started to make arguments, and by the way, that also doesn't consider the fact that he wore socks with police officers depicted as pigs. I mean, that's very inflammatory things. Most look, The goal of a protest, if you want to change something, is to get allies. It's to bring people who don't agree with you to the table to agree with you. In order to get allies, what do you have to do? You have to be less inflammatory. That's the way that you could be successful. That's an interesting distinction. I'm going to take your calls to close out the show. But 